In this video, we are going to be talking about the pre-code film from 1932, Red-Headed Woman, which starred Jean Harlow and Chester Morris, and it was directed by Jack Conway. My guest today is Vanessa Butino, who is a writer, and she's been on the show many times, of course. So Vanessa, welcome back. Thanks so much for joining me. Thanks for having me back. Hey, everyone. I love these pre-code films. <laughs> I mean, they're so, they're, 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 they're just, I, I still can't get over that when they were made, especially like this one, which we'll get into in particular. So how do you feel about uh, Red-Headed Woman? Is this one that you like a lot? Yeah. Yeah, I've always loved this one. And I'm not going to say that it's a fantastic movie because it's not the best pre-code I've seen. People may feel differently. But uh, yeah, it's not the best one, but it's certainly a very good one. And I, like you said, I can't believe that this was released in 1932 because the yeah. subject matter just seems so modern. Oh yeah. I think this film is almost a hundred years old. It's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 90, 90 years, 89 years as of this year, which is hmm. remarkable. It, I, I couldn't believe how much it resembled baby face, which we talked about last time. Uh, but this was the year prior to baby face, but you know, what's, what, what's different here. I mean, we have that similar plot where a woman is using men sexually in order to advance in, in society, but whereas we we don't see the, the backstory with the Gene Harlow character at where we do with uh, Barbara Stanwyck, which is, it was so empathetic. Uh, and in this way, we don't know why she wants to do what she's doing. So do you think that's problematic looking at it from 2021 to see like a quote unquote, you know, these gold digger character or what do you think? No, I don't, I don't see it as being problematic, but I think the major difference, if we're going to compare Redheaded Woman to Babyface, I think the major difference is that Barbara Stanwyck's character, like you said, is very likable. Yeah. Uh, and we, the audience, feel very sympathetic towards her. Whereas in Redheaded Woman, Jean Harlow's character, Lillian, she's not likable at all. <laughs> in fact, like even even if you love Jean Harlow, which I myself do, I absolutely adore Jean Harlow. You, I can't help hating her in this movie because mm. she is not a likable character. And I think if the story had or if the film had explored her backstory more, perhaps I would have liked her a little bit better. Yeah. But no, she's not a likable character. But that in itself is very interesting because you don't often see classic films uh where the main character is unlikable yeah no i agree and even and even <clears throat> even the men really i mean you know i mean you know you see her sleeping around she's cheating she's mm. uh making calculated moves in order to get ahead but at the same time the men are also cheating and the men are are hypocritical and, yes. and, ab and abusive i mean that one scene i was so shocked when uh the uh sorry the care uh bill who plays uh chester morris who plays the the man she marries and and of course he's married and as we know she's been trying to get with him they've had an affair and she she is will not stop i mean it's amazing how much she was con committed to getting him away from his wife mm -hmm. and that scene where you know he comes to her place and tells her to stop and and starts to hit her because she keeps seducing him and he likes it. I mean, he really, he can't help but fall for her. And then that scene, and it's, and they do it in a tongue in cheek way where she puts the key down her dress, mm -hmm. but, and she's almost aroused by the fact that she's being hit. I mean, it's, I, I was so shocked, uh, you know, that they, that they had that, but I thought it was so unique that we do, everyone in this movie is so flawed is so highly and 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 not and complex and i think those are the kind of movies i like everybody is really up has some bad motives you're right in saying that almost every single character on screen in this film has flaws yeah i would say except for 
the wife. That's what I uh, thought. Played played by Layla Hyams. That's she right. Is, oh my God, she's fantastic. She was um, really good. However, so she's the only character in this film that I felt sorry for. Me too. Uh, but there there is one scene where Chester okay. Morris, as her ex-husband now, because they've divorced, where he kind of apologizes and said, oh, you know, I'm sorry this all happened. I should never have left you. And she says something like, oh, you know, part of it was my fault because I should have fought harder for you. And yeah. just, oh, yeah. like, shit, like, don't say that. Oh yeah. my goodness, you you were on such a high pedestal for me until that point, and then you just dropped down a little bit. It's right. not your fault. But yeah. in 1932, if a, a married couple, if one of them committed adultery, it was often looked at as the woman's fault, as the right. wife's fault. So I right. mean, that just, that's, that just goes with the times but to hear that now in 2021 it's like oh no don't say that yeah that i thought that too uh at, at the same time I, I can understand that when things go wrong in relationships we we often do think it's it has to have been something I, we did not yeah. that she not that she did anything but you can't help but have those you know doubts or insecurities pop up just that in her way it's such a uh in the way in which she did it, it's, it's, you know, it's like, it's horrific that she would even take that point of view. Yeah. Uh, instead of, you know, looking at, you know, what, what, it, what really went wrong. I mean, Chester Morris, who plays the husband, he just can't help it. But we've seen that in films later, uh, like, um, I mean, Fatal Attraction's more of like a neo-noir, but a guy like Michael Douglas, he's in like a good marriage, you know? Yeah. And it's just one of those, not that I agree with it, but it's like, you know, you meet someone in a certain setting, and sometimes, unfortunately, you 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 make those you make a bad choice, and you go mm -hmm. for it. But in his case, he kept making the same bad choice over and over again. I mean, yeah. I know she was initiating it, but still, I mean, you have to you, you could just walk away, uh, <laughs> and he just he just couldn't help it. And mm -hmm. at the same time, it's told with a real tongue in cheek. Like there's a lot of great humor. I mean, even off the top when you know she gets the the red hair dyed and you know a hey, gentleman a gentleman prefer blondes don't do they and sure enough there's this red-headed woman who stands out and i love right away you get to you see how she knows she she understands uh, she understands something about men which is that they're motivated by sex you mm -hmm. know and yes. that bootlegger off the top you know she makes out with him a little bit and then as a way to get rid of him oh you know this guy the, the guy working here was was giving me a hard time and then boom his his ego and his pride just starts to fight with the other guy she walks out i thought that is so great because it says so much about what she was capable of and what she knew in just yeah. that one short scene do you find this film funny i find it i find parts funny yeah. Any any word that comes out of Una Merkel's mouth. So Una Merkel played Sally. Oh, the friend. Uh, Lillian's yeah. Lillian's best friend. She was oh hilarious. my god. Every line yeah. Una Merkel says <laughs> is hilarious. But yeah. she and she's like that in every single movie she's been in. So she's just an utter delight. Uh, yeah. yeah, you know what? This like you said, this film is very tongue in cheek. You very much. It, do, it does not shy away from suggestive material. Yeah. And yeah, parts of it are hilarious. Yeah, and apparently that was intentional because I'm sure you know F. Scott Fitzgerald yes. wrote the script and, and wrote it very seriously. And the producer brought in another writer in yes. order to yeah. lighten it up. Anita Luce. Yes. And again, she a female screenwriter. Right, yeah, to... and she was she was very popular at the time, and she actually went on to pen Gentlemen Prefer Blondes. Oh wow! Yeah, so she yeah. was very popular. Well, she. I mean, I thought I think that's the right choice because I think if it was told really, really seriously, um, you know, it was already like banned in the UK. I mean, I yeah. think it would have been even harder to swallow. Uh, I mean, you know, like I like we had said, it, she a woman, you know, she tries to kill her. This guy, she, you know, she's. She's cheating. She's there's premarital sex. There's, and even that scene, women undressing, like when yep. they're when they're getting ready for bed. 
Uh, you don't really see anything. I think for like a split second, you see something. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, but it's 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 just incredible. And and even when she's getting hit, they make it a little comedic because as she puts the key down her dress, and it's clever editing. You he goes, he approaches, and you keep hearing the smack. But then it's the judge. Uh, what, what's that thing? The called? gavel. The gavel. Is that what it's called? I never even yeah. knew that. Yeah. yeah. As he's, <laughs> as he's adjourning for the, the, it's the same noise as a slap in the divorce hearing. And I just thought, oh my God, that is so um, daring. Mm -hmm. you know, yeah, just... MGM, MGM, which is the studio that released this film, they got away with a lot in this particular movie. Yeah, they and, really did. Yeah, and you're right about it being banned in the UK. I think this redheaded woman, was released in North America in 1932 and I don't think it was actually passed in the UK until I want to say 1965 but I could be wrong on that so like mid 60s can you imagine for 30 years a film oh is banned and then long, finally man? in the mid 60s as the code is you know self combusting it, it finally is approved for yeah. overseas that's crazy wow 30 yeah. that's like sometimes it's just it's unbelievable to me. I mean, even things that we still see today, I'm like, what year are you in? <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, it's, it's, it's just, it's, I mean, it's such a sliding scale in the world we live in. Um, another thing though, as much, as highly as flawed as they are, there, there is a real strength about her. I mean, she's tough. I mean, she really, mm -hmm. if you cross her, she was like, whether it was when her husband, when the man she eventually marries, when he says, I'll meet you at 10 tomorrow and then doesn't show up. Yeah. I mean, she goes over there and really tells him off. Uh, and even at the end, all the society people at that party, they go to her party and then immediately after go to another party and it was intentional. So they'll put it in the newspapers and make her look bad and, and that they didn't like her. I mean, she just, she just gives them hell. Whereas her husband is very passive. I mean, mm -hmm. he, no one wants to meet her because the guy was divorced and uh, oh i don't want anything to do with your wife because you're your second wife so he he lets it go i mean he doesn't stand up for anything i was like you know clearly he just married her because he was attracted to her i don't think yeah. there was anything more in their relationship you know i mean what, what did you think i think part of the reason why now okay it's said in the movie that Chester Morris and Layla Hyams, his first wife in the film, that they they were basically childhood sweethearts. So yes, yeah. the, the two of them have only ever known what love is with each other. Right. So I think the appeal for Chester Morris's character is that he was craving some kind of excitement that he yeah. wasn't getting with his wife, who he's known since they were children. So for him, the appeal was, you know, excitement, sex, stuff mm -hmm. that he doesn't have with his wife anymore. Right. Uh, I, I don't think he ever really loved Lillian, Jean Harlow's character. I no, think it I was just so all either. about sex. And, and yeah. that's actually brought up in the movie where Layla Hyams, uh, I think this is after she divorces Chester Morris, where she confronts him and says, you know, th this is not going to last. Yeah. Whatever you have with her is just based on sex. It's not love. And yeah. she's, she's absolutely right. Yeah, I agree. I, I, I believe she said that to both of them, right? She yes. shows up and really, yeah. Uh, there, so there was a real strength with her as well. I mean, she doesn't just take it and walk away, no. even though even though we saw scenes where she was blaming herself. Mm -hmm. and, and But then later on, I think she she assesses it perfectly uh, in terms of, you know, this is this is bullshit. I think in this film, it's it's funny that now that we're having this conversation, I never really thought of this before, but almost the gender roles are reversed in this film compared to other classic films where yeah. the women are the ones who have power and control and, and force in this yeah. film. Whereas in, in many or the majority of classic films that we watch, it's usually the men who yeah. are the ones with the power and the force and the strength. And in this film, the men just, I mean, they have no spine, no balls whatsoever I, yeah. in this film. That, that really popped out to me. Yeah, and, yeah. They're, and they're, um, their way of dealing with thing is to just write a check and, and get yeah. rid of her, you know, or, or just, 
they don't want to just deal with things head on whereas she really will i mean she's willing to confront she's willing to fight and uh whereas you know that they, they they just use their resources and i mean i thought that scene was also when when the father uh it was trying to get her to go to new york and he writes a check uh, uh for 500 bucks and then she forgets it and she goes back and, yeah, and takes it. it i thought that was <laughs> hilarious you know um but she really shows them uh in the i mean it, it, the movie doesn't even really end because she just kind of goes on to her next <laughs> no and you know what this is the 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 character who's done so much sinning in the whole film she's never ever punished at the yeah, end yeah that's and true you, it, that's as true. much as much as you don't like her character and yeah. I'm talking about Jean Harlow's character. As much as you don't like her, you're still kind of pleased that she mm. got away with everything in the end and that she was never punished, which in most yeah. Hollywood movies, you right. are punished at the end if you've done something wrong. Yeah, that's a yeah. that's a that's a, you know, that's a really really good point. If people look at these pre-code films, I mean, they're they hold up so well. I mean, they I don't think I mean, I haven't seen every pre-code that's ever been made, but um I, I just they're incredibly progressive and incredibly yes. uh, relevant and and they offer so much in terms of not just like I think when we think prequel people think like sex and the raunchiness but there's there's a lot of um, it goes deeper than that there's a lot yeah. more than just the sex yeah 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 no no absolutely but there is, uh, sorry go ahead there's one thing I wanted to ask you mm. so what did I, I know how have you seen many Jean Harlow films so far or or is this one of your first I think I've only she was in Public Enemy right yes yeah I, I think that's the only one I've seen of hers okay and now this one I don't know her career very well I mean I know she died when she was very young at 26 yes. I was just reading about that earlier that it was uh, all these different theories about why uh, her health or kidney problems were neglected and stuff like that. Uh, but no, I haven't. I've only seen Public Enemy, yeah. What do you think of her in terms of, like, do you think she's she was a good actress in Redheaded Woman and Public Enemy or, yeah, what are your thoughts? Well, you know, I mean, again, this is, I was gonna, uh, interesting you asked that because it's, I think you have to sometimes look at it for the, the the context of when it was made, I mean, you had very few actors th at that time, particularly because they were in silent films, mm -hmm. who who were who could be very truthful and, and natural and spontaneous on screen. I mean, Barbara Stanwyck certainly could do oh, it. Yeah, uh, I mean, she was incredible. So in this film, like she is like yelling or she's screaming or she's telling someone off, but there's nothing behind it. There's no. Mm -hmm. There's no, she's not actually experiencing those feelings. I mean, she has, she was natural in terms of being sed seductive and, and certain qualities that she could, I think she could do very easily. But uh, when she had to get upset, even that scene, I mean, I like the scene when she broke that frame when he didn't, when mm -hmm. he didn't show up to meet her in the frame of her, of that she later marries and she smashes it, but she's not, upset for real the her as the yeah. actress didn't actually have those feelings so it's quite it's quite handy i mean everybody uh uh as i said back then really was uh even the who plays her husband um he was better in this film but in other films i've seen you can see he's not listening to the other actor it's very mm -hmm. mapped out his performance he was a, he was better in this one it didn't feel as as artificial but that that was what i took from her but at the same time you don't really it doesn't it doesn't make the movie not enjoyable mm -hmm. you just i still enjoy it even though i'm 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 not seeing uh an actor really really experiencing that feeling but you still like it in in a sometimes and you can you can get away with that if the story is really compelling i find but that's i don't know what you thought about her in this as as a huge gene harlow fan i have to agree with everything you've just said the word hammy and yeah. camp yeah applies to her performance in this so yeah i've read i've read a few books on gene harlow and in 
almost every single one, the author mentions that Jean Harlow, she never sought to become an actress. She was never really interested in becoming oh, an actress. I didn't it know just that. it just happened as a coincidence. She was she was, I think, um, maybe 18, 19 years old, and she was dropping off one of her friends at Fox Studios because the, her friend uh, was working there and her friend needed a ride. So she just dropped her off at the studio. And that's how she was discovered. Oh, Someone okay. from Fox spotted her in the car and said, do you, do you want to come into central casting and start working? And yeah. she laughed it off. She, she had no desire to become a, a film star. So she, and she never had that natural talent in front right. of the film in front of the camera so in her early pictures i would say from the late 20s because she did uh, she was in some silent films so from the late 20s to maybe 1933 1934 she wasn't a good actress she was a wonderful performer yeah and she certainly had on-screen chemistry with the people she worked with. Right, right. But she was not a good actress. No. I think she she developed into a great actress and comedic performer later on in her career. Now, unfortunately, the last film she made was in 1937, came out in 1937, and uh, she passed away very yeah. early at the age of 26. So she never really had a yeah. chance to go on if if she had lived longer and made more films i think she she would have kept developing and she would have just been an incredible performer as it yeah, stands with the so. yeah with the films she had made you could see her 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 growth so if you start from the very beginning even like you said public enemy that's 1931 i mean she was so wooden yeah she in that was film. Yeah. it was just like she was standing in front of the camera yeah. doing the movements that the director told her to do and just reciting lines that's all it was i remember then, that yeah. yeah but then when you go to a film like libeled lady which was released i believe in 1936 oh my you can't take your eyes off her she is such a natural yeah on screen so you could if you go from start to finish in terms of her, the film she made you can definitely see a development of talent there and she was she was just incredible so yeah i understand what you're saying uh, when you see redheaded woman and that's you know the first experience watching a gene harlow movie you're not going to think that she's the world's greatest actress and that's okay because at that time she wasn't that's interesting you know yeah. and and at this and uh, you know at the same time it's there, there wasn't anywhere for these actors in, in the early 30s to go to 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 learn to be mm. real on camera. I mean, either the ones who could do it just really had a natural instinct for it, yes. like a uh, Stanwick and yes. Agni and actors like that, or um, there, there was no guidance for it. There was no mm. training. I mean, this is before... Stanislavski or Method, I mean, that was that was just beginning to uh, blossom in theater, where the group sure. theater, they were, but that was in New York, you know, so it was years before it had gotten to uh, uh, Hollywood. Hollywood, you know, yeah. and, and the people who, like Gable was, was also very good, very natural. I mean, you know, I think often the people we look back on had it uh or they had different qualities that people were mm -hmm. very 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 fond of but you know what louis stone was pretty good too and i know we already mentioned Le uh, leela hyams yeah she's uh, fantastic and una uh, merkel the friend was i mean you know like i state they sir and charles bouillet was the french yes. lover later <laughs> yeah the chauffeur yeah this was one of his first yeah. film roles yeah yeah you know but it's it's really interesting to watch the performances back then because we you know I think I think there a lot more was required from Harlow like she had to she had to go through so much range of emotions whereas yeah. you know Louis Stone had to be stern and serious There's, I think there were certain qualities that maybe some of the women and men I don't know their backstory but they were more comfortable with it was a natural thing but mm -hmm. it's a lot harder to do uh, um, Jean Harlow's parts because, as we've discussed, there's so much behavior yep. from this character. So, uh, but it 
but you know, like I said, you still really, really enjoy it. Uh, I, I, I really enjoyed it, uh, regardless of, of that. Uh, was there anything else that you wanted to mention about this film? No, no, I think that was it. But uh, I, I guess anyone who's watching, if you've never seen a pre-code before, this is a good one to start with. Yeah. For sure. It's not, again, it's not the best pre-code, but it's a good one to start with. Yeah, no, I agree. And this is on the Criterion channel. Uh, so you can see it there. Again, it's very short, hour and 20 minutes. And mm -hmm. I, I thought it was really, really good. Well, Vanessa, thanks again for joining me. It's always a pleasure. Oh, thanks for having on. me back. Thank yeah. you. No, anytime. And for those of you watching, thank you so much. Please consider subscribing to my channel if you haven't already done so. It's absolutely free. You will see my logo, uh, the Robert Bellissimo at the Movies logo, floating above your head to, to floating above my head, sorry, to your top left. Just click on that and then click the bell in order to get a notification every time I release a new video or go live. I want to thank everyone who's a Patreon member of mine. I now have a pre-code newsletter every single month where I talk about my pre-code journey as it's still very new for me and what I've been uh, watching and discovering and learning or what I already discovered. Uh, and the link to my Patreon is in the description box below as well. And thanks again, and I will see you in the next video.